Hey guys, we're down at Wall Bay Jetty this afternoon. It's pretty calm. Um, just gonna put some a squid teaser out, put some burley out, hopefully get some squid and some tommies. Uh, high tide's in about an hour, so hoping that um, we can uh, ride that and get some uh, get some, some of a feed. So we've just got the tommy here as a squid teaser. Get it through the nose there. So bead down to a float, small weight just to get it to the bottom, uh, and then a swivel, and a Tommy, no hooks. Oh, let's make sure we've got, yeah, it's about right. Then I guess we just wait. Just with the slightly overcast conditions and sort of coming close to sunset, just gonna try the gold runner from Inku and put some Squidgy's S Factor on that as well. See if we can get something first cast. So I'm generally just letting it sink. It's not too deep here, so probably six, seven seconds. And then a couple of quick flip up. We'll go like that and then any squid there should catch it on the, uh, on the sink. Certainly looks like there's some Tommies or something out there at the back. Possibly even salmon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are Tommies out there. So we'll see if we can uh, interest a few. Actually, just going to put a ball float on, just a tiny one. Not so much because I need the need it as a float to um, more, just as a tiny bit of weight. And again, as per the last video, just a really simple rig, just a bubble float down to a swivel with a hook coming off. See if that gets any action. I'll give this barely bucket a bit of a shake to you. Yeah, I'm getting some action out there, which is good. So yeah, I'm pretty convinced that they are Tommies. The next question is how big are they? Oh, I've got one on, but it's not big, not big at all. Oh, it's not too bad. Actually, it's pretty big. It's reasonable. Just he wasn't really committed to it. So, yeah, we've got the... Uh, oh, if I can get, get it off. 
So yeah, not uh, not too bad, definitely edible. We can start the uh, we can start the collection with that. Let's see if we can. Uh, See if we can add more to it. It's actually just right out there by the by the squid float, so it's actually quite good if there is a squid around and the Tommy should attract them. There's another one. Going sideways. This could be a quick feed, guys. Just want to get him away from that teaser line. If we end up with a feed of Tommies, we'll be happy. And yeah, re as I said, reasonable size. They're definitely, definitely inhaling the hooks, which is good as well. There we go there, not bad size. Yeah, yeah, got a few. Sorry, yeah, I've got a YouTube channel. Um, Matt's fishing escapes on YouTube. So. <laughs> Let's see if we can. That's two. Yeah, you can see the little rings of the fish out there, right by that. Oh, it's moot stop now, of course. Right by the. Uh, the squid float. That's uh, two tummies so far. I just felt a bite then. Yeah, you can see the float. They're not actually dragging it right down. And I've said this before in my other videos, you've got to sort of watch the float. Sometimes they just take it sideways or, you know, Oh, that one took it under, but he didn't connect. He's got it now. And we've got him. Yeah. Oh, I just need to keep him clear of that. This is a reason, bit bigger one. Keep him clear of the... Uh, keep him clear of the... Um, squid teaser fight. But yeah, so look at that, right right through the top of the lip. These are just size eight owner hooks. You don't have to be big. As they say, you can catch big fish on small hook. There he's there. Pretty good size. I'll give you an idea. If I can get my hand out. Give an idea of size there. Yeah, there you go. He's 20 centimeters, which is pretty good. Had had bigger, but I think if they're over, if they're over sort of 16, 18, you get a reasonable fillet off them. And we may as, well, uh, may as well make hay while the sun shines, as they say. There's another one on that one out there. Yeah, and it's not even like taking it under. You just give it a bit of a flick. It's like... Pretty good. He's, like, he's absolutely inhaled it. That's uh, right down his guts. Oh, and I've actually snapped the hook off, so we'll have to put a new hook on that one. <clears throat> so just going to use some 10 pound. It's probably actually a little bit heavy, but it'll do the job. Just some 10 pound platypus mono. I doubt the Tommies are going to go anywhere with the burley and that that I've got out there. Just actually put a little bead, just a tiny green bead on this one, just so it stands out. Not that we're having any issue actually attracting them, but it can sometimes help. So that's the uh, just the tiny little green bead that we're going to put on. All right, we're finally uh, we're finally rigged back up. Time for some bait. <clears throat> this weather is really nice. Like it's uh, probably about 15 degrees. I think it said in the car when we rocked up. Just going to. Uh, 
Oh, that's interesting. That um, squid float was having a little bit of action. Maybe with the Tommies around, the squid are starting to come out of their weed and uh, get involved. Can't feel any weight. Just starting to get a little bit of a ripple on the water now. It was fairly glassed out before. I mean, it's glassed out obviously, but in terms of it was flat as a tack. We might just put a couple more drops of oil out there. This is the uh, Tasman salmon oil. Um, obviously I've just put it in a different container because I got a big 10, I think it was a big 10 litre one. And uh, yeah, you don't really need a lot. And um, I didn't have much luck on the first few times I've used it, but um, just for a bit more recently, and there we go, that one's hooked himself. Nice little jump. But yeah, the last few times, I guess maybe the different season, the Tommies are finally in the gar, are finally starting to actually come in. Just trying to get him to let go of the hook. He doesn't want to. Pretty much got most of my gents back. Again, probably one of the getting to the smaller ones we've had, but you get enough of them, they all... Uh, You get enough of them, they all add up to a good feed, which is good. It's nice to just come out and start catching fish straight away and ensure that you miss that donut. And again, you know, just it's worth just keeping the float, you know, every now and then if it's no action, you know there's fish out there, just, just move the bait a little bit. It'll, uh, it will help. There we go. You can see that going down under and we've hooked him. Again, just trying to keep him clear. Just trying to keep him clear of the, both the teaser line as well as the uh, burly bucket. They are abs, they're hungry. They're pretty much scoffing it straight down. They will, uh, I don't know, I've lost count how many we've got now. We've got six, might have to count them and put it up on the screen. Got a slight breeze behind us now, which is good. It's giving us a little bit more cast length because um, they are a little bit further out the back. You can see the, the squid float there. They're just a little bit further out. Hmm. Ah, here we go. I was about to say it's got a bit quiet, but got him. These ones aren't um, these ones aren't jumping like the ones uh, the other week at um, Port Vincent. They seem to be keeping down a bit, but again, good size. So we're doing that a bit awkward, and I'm not complaining. So I guess down in the comments, how do you prepare your tommies? Do you smoke them? You just have them as fillets, battered, fried. We tend to do it all different ways. Um, Kat, my partner, and I have a bit of a deal. I do the catching and the cleaning uh, of the fish and she does the cooking. So we, um, yeah, she finds all different ways to do it, especially when you have a, hopefully what's gonna be, end up being a good session like this one. Um, and you've got a lot of different fish to eat sort of throughout the week. You can freeze them obviously, but we tend to try and just uh, have a I guess a fish week and have them in all different ways. Yeah, I'm sort of surprised that the squid teaser hasn't gone down yet, given that, um, you know, there's plenty of Tommies around, so you'd think there'd be plenty of squid trying to catch them, especially as we're on the incoming tide still. Might need to freshly bait up again. The Tommies can tend to be a bit picky when there's not a full hook of gents. <coughs> yeah, they're a bit, um, have a look at them, they're a bit sucked and not all that, don't look all that delicious. So yeah, everyone had been saying to come down to Wool Bay, well quite a few people were asking for it, so it's good to be here. And as I said, it's good to uh, have some sort of immediate action. We shouldn't have to wait too long with those fresh 
gents for that one to hook up. But again, don't really want to uh, get hooked up on that teaser line to the point where I'm thinking I may even, I'm not sure, may even move it. Well, as I said, let a bit more of that barely out. Seems to be doing the seems to be doing the trick. Hmm. You say that, and then it goes a bit quiet again. There we go. Now it's going under again. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he saw it move and then decided to come back for it. Good. Another nice one. So we're still waiting for a bit of rain here in uh, South Australia, especially in areas like this on the York Peninsula with the um, broadacre farming and so forth. Um, work at Pioneer Water Tanks has been pretty busy because we've been down an operations coordinator with a replacement starting on Tuesday, so looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, we've got some end of financial year deals. So if you're in South Australia and looking for a, uh, a new rainwater tank, especially one of the larger ones for your lifestyle or um, farming type uses, um, give us a call and uh, ask for Matt and uh, let me know you heard about it from the channel and uh, I'll make sure to look after you as we get another one interested. I heard a stat the other day that 16% of Australians live without mains water, so definitely a need for the Pioneer tanks. Getting a few bites, but neither of them took the actual bait, which was a bit interesting. I think we might actually have one on there, yeah. <laughs> Again, they're not taking it straight down, they're taking it sort of to the left or right, so you keep an eye on that float. And we don't need a massive float they're um they're being a bit um sensitive on the i guess the resistance that's why sometimes largely i just fish without even a float just a swivel and a hook another another nice one and this sort of fishing is fantastic for the kids as well um, not a lot of trouble you can get into with one hook and a bubble float and if you really want to, you can either use those um, plastic, soft plastic um, gents, which I think you, I'm not sure exactly where you can get them, but if you Google up soft plastic gents, you'll be able to find them. I haven't actually tried them, but I'm assuming they work quite well. Still very surprised that that bloody squid float hasn't gone under. Just put that there. Doesn't even feel like the, ah, oh, there is a fish still on it. All right, we got some action on that float again. And it's being pulled straight to the right. You can see that. Got him. Just that little quick flick, those tiny hooks will get straight in there. He doesn't even realize his hook when I stop winding. Oh, just lost him there at the bucket. They do that. They can uh, drop hooks fairly quickly, or fairly easily, sorry. That's all right. They're still out there, and that's the main thing. That wind from behind is just picking up, which is good, because that just means we're getting a bit further cast. Though, again, I don't want to get the... I don't want to get the squid teaser in the way. I might have to actually cast out to the right and let it float to the left, just so we don't get into any trouble. Last thing you want to do is lose a fish because you've got to tangle. Don't mind if they drop off every now and then, but don't want to lose it because we hooked it up on the teaser line or worst case even I hate is the on the burley bucket. Hoping it's not gonna rain. I didn't I looked at the, I looked at the wind and I looked at the tides, but I didn't really look at the rain. I guess we're actually not too far from the start of the jetty, so if it, uh, it's just down there, if we if it does happen to rain we should be uh, we should be okay to get back to the car without getting too wet. 
Not sure where the Tommies have gone. They appear to have gone a little bit quiet. That could be a sign that there's some more, that well, there's some actual squid around. Not sure. Looks like someone just caught a squid down there, so maybe the squid are starting to think about coming in. And that might have moved the Tommies on. So we'll just put this one down and we'll grab the squid out, the squid jig out. Keep an eye on that float, put a squid jig out here and see if, um, see if we can uh, maximize our opportunities. You can see Tommy just flicked out there, so I might be wrong again. So yeah, again in South Australia, uh, you'll have two rods and one teaser which is what I've got. I've got the Tommy rod and the squid, jig, squid rod here and the teaser Tommy out there. Make sure you don't go over that. Um, otherwise you could face a fine if, uh, if you get checked. Well, that's interesting because the Tommies are um, back out the back of that float again now. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. We haven't had a lot of uh, interest on the squid jig. You just see it down in front of me here. Might actually just leave it in the water. You never know. And see if we can get this float out the back. Might need to make the, uh, the squid teaser a little bit deeper. I can actually see the fish from where I am under the float so it may not be deep enough to I mean they would normally just come up to it but maybe because it's so calm they don't want to uh, potentially risk themselves coming up that high out of the weeds to get it nothing has touched that at all, we may as well try at this longer length. So I put a, uh, a box of squid jags, old ones, down the end of the jetty for free, and I just put a, a note on it saying, "Please take one." And the kids uh, are a bit excited. How are you going? Are you on YouTube? Like? Yes, what's I am. Your, what's your YouTube channel? What the sticker you? that you've got. Matt's Fishing Escapes. Yeah. I'm watching it when I get home. Yeah, we're watching it. No worries, guys. Enjoy. All right. Yeah, I did see another Tommy flipping out the back there. Fresh uh, bait. We'll see if we can be good to get another 10 or so. I think we've got about 10 at the moment. Having a look, no, no squidly down there on the jig. No squid on the, no squid on the teaser. Three or four squid with the Tommies would be perfect. That burly bucket's getting a bit empty. That's all right. Oh, don't know if that's someone casting or a bigger fish out the back there. All right, we're back on again, guys. Oh, pulled hooks, pulled hooks. Let's see if he comes back. There's definitely some out the back of that squid float. Yeah, it's going under again now. Oh, they're not just not taking it. What's going on? Might have lost my bait, might need to check. I'm just reluctant to pull it out when I can see, oh, now it's going under again. Yeah, got him that time, finally. Just keep him in the water. He's less likely to throw hooks if he's in the water. This one doesn't feel as big, but they've been a bit deceptive. He's a little bit smaller, but he'll do. And, and generally what I do is I won't keep, well, I mean, I'll keep them, but I won't eat all, the, all of them. I'll keep a few for the squid teasers for the next trip. Comment below, what other place would you like me to try? So we did Wall Bay on a request from a, a subscriber. Um, not too bad, that one. Uh, our squid float is under. All right, guys, we might be on. 
We're going to put this behind you. And that squid float is well under. And taking line. This is actually a very, it's either a squid or a fish. Oh my God, what is it? Something very large. If it's a squid, it might have been a uh, cuddle, cuddly, to be honest. I think it's back on it. Let's make sure I'm not tip wrapped here so I can bring it in. And I may, with it being as big as it is, I may need to actually land it down here on the steps. But anyway, I think it's back on it, so let's, yeah. Oh, it's gotta be a cuttlefish or a big crab. No, oh my God, I've never feel, uh, felt a squid pull it like that. Ever have I felt a squid pull it like that. That, that was super weird. Like it was really, it wasn't pulsing either. It was just like pulling it. I might see what we do and throw this squid jag out behind it. All the Tommies are back. Could have been a seal or something. <laughs> just playing with it, don't know. That was super weird. If you think you know what it was, whack it in the comments because it was uh, like it was moving. It was trying to take it out that way. It wasn't... Uh, I'm going to have a look at the fish. All right, something's actually taken the whole fish, guys. Something has taken that whole fish and just left the head. So I think we should get another fish out there. <laughs> yeah, got another Tommy. Hopefully this isn't too boring for you guys, but I really quite like just a, a nice session on the Tommy. It's, it's peaceful, it's tranquil. Don't think this one's as big. So again, we'll have to keep an eye on the size because if the bigger ones have been catching on the longer trace, they might be a bit further down in the column than these ones. I mean, it's still edible. I'll get the measure again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's 18 centimetres. So the difference sort of, well, he's close to 19 even. The difference between a couple of centimetres um, is significant when you're talking these fish. Haven't spoken about it for a while, but um, fishing is certainly uh, certainly one of my methods for uh, managing my mental health. And I hadn't actually been fishing for three weeks, so um, lots of new things happening at home with a new puppy, um, Kelpie, called um, Ziggy, and um, trying to train him, or not so much me, but my partner and daughter trying to train him, and. He's waking us up all hours of the night, it's just like having a newborn. Obviously then at work, I'm learning my new role as general manager. I'm trying to learn the, the role of uh, the rural sales and dealing with a, um, uh, dealing with a, a person to parting and, and hiring a new one. So have been fairly stressed and life sort of gotten in the way. So yeah, this is the first time in three weeks, hence there hasn't been as regular videos. So apologize for that, but that's life. Um, be great to be able to do this as a full-time living and be a bit more accountable to the audience but uh, life still happens there's definitely still some uh, Tommies out there so let's get these uh, guys on but definitely couldn't pass up going fishing today when you looked at the tides right you know high tide right on sunset the wind almost non-existent I only chose the eastern side of the York Peninsula because there was a little bit of a um, uh, a westerly. Uh, I would have actually expected to see a few more people down here given how good the weather is. Have a good night guys. Give us a sub. All right so I was actually out the back um, but it looks like these Tommies are coming a bit closer so you know you've always got to keep your eye out see where the see where the jumping and action oh they can be spiky these guys and so they're not they're, they're literally just out there oh, I keep getting this oh no i think it's free now I keep getting this float i'm actually going to put the float back down again because i think that one was a little bit smaller as well and again maybe the bigger ones are just down the bit further down the column so we'll we will just do that but again so they're just out there hopefully you can see that be good if that breeze picked up a bit so we, we've just cast right in the middle of them certainly not going to miss any fish jumping about with this water being as flooded as it is i'm just getting a, a bite now you can see that float going left 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 and we've got him 
<laughs> it's so much fun when you see the flight and it's like, I'm trying to eat it, but not let him know I'm on it. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but so many people tend to diss the Tommy Ruff and as, a, as an eating fish, but you know, in South Australia, land-based fishing, we don't get a lot of choice. And I, and I think they're absolutely perfect. They're actually quite a strong flavored fish, which I like. And just really simple, some Tandako fish coating, skin side down on the barbecue, you can't go wrong. There's a ton out the back there, which I can't quite get to. And there's a few more a bit closer in as well. Just wish there was a few squid around. I might just bring it in. There's a few just bouncing around closer in here, which hopefully we should catch. Yeah, I just felt a bite then. Amazing on the, with the braid, with the light braid, you just feel everything. I think that's a school and they're following in this burly trail. There we go, he's gone under. Take it, mate, yep. Oh, he pulled the hooks. Pulled hooks, that's all right. He's got it again. We should have him this time. We do. I don't know how well hooked he is. That's not too bad. So yeah, right on sunset, pretty much. It's coming down behind that those cliffs over there. So we've got, it's going under again. He definitely seemed big enough. And we should get a bite pretty simply. And we do. Oh, and this feels uh, a bit bigger, which is good. See how clear the water is like. If you can see that, it's so clear. <clears throat> doesn't want to let go of his dinner. So guys, this is the second sort of bread and butter session in a row in terms of, you know, catching Tommies and stuff. Do you, in, in, do you like that sort of stuff? Uh, again, coming into winter, they're just, you know, the fishing does slow down a little bit here. There's only so much you can sort of do. But if you've got any ideas, let me know. And I think we've got another one. See the float going left, right, sorry. There we go. Got another one. And we've got another one under. Oh, we let go. Should come back. It's just going down. Got him. Now I just want to keep him away from that squid teaser line. <laughs> it's funny how they just settle down. When you stop winding, it's like, oh, they think they're not hooked. But yeah, definitely guys, I think having that trace longer, the bigger ones are at the bottom. A bit like they say, the bigger ones are often at the back. Uh, those bigger ones uh, definitely seem to be at the bottom, which is important to, to know, because if you don't want to catch the small ones, it's just a simple change of length of the uh, trace. So generally what I do, we are getting near the end of the session, I guess, because we're going to run out of light. Uh, generally what I do is that I will scale the Tommies at the jetty just to save that mess from home. And then I'll, um, just fill up them at home. Um, if you watch my initial very first video at Wallaroo, um, and there's also a short of filleting a Tommy in 60 seconds, and that's a good one. Um, yeah, where if you want to know how to fill it a Tommy in 60 seconds, it's in my shorts reel. Uh, as I said, it's also at the end of my, it's also at the end of my Wallaroo very first video. So I won't necessarily show that to you again. Oh. This is a big fat Tommy. I didn't think I'd catch this many fish before sunset. We're getting there. As I said, would have been nice to catch some squid. So yeah, we've got some, uh, we've got some fish for the rest of the week. 
and uh, thanks for joining us again. I'm glad uh, to be back out here after three weeks and uh, watch this video next.